Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Cemetery Mary. Uh, I have been coming to appreciate Twyla more as a character. She still occasionally hella red flags, but I've been coming to appreciate her. Um, Twyla met me by the cemetery, like we agreed. She was tapping her foot impatiently in front of the gate. Took you long enough to get here. My bus runs on a schedule, I'm sorry. She had the list in hand like we agreed. Walking to the cemetery, we looked for the people that were on her list. People who died shortly around the time rumors of the killer came to be. After a bit of walking, we actually managed to find two of the people on the list right next to each other. Alright, so we found them. Now what? Are you going to tell me what your idea was already? Oh, right, 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 right. So, uh, remember when you saw me and Reginald in the cemetery together? Yeah. Well, that's because he found me asleep on one of the graves? Wow. Just when I thought you couldn't try any harder to be goth. Uh, c continue. Oh, uh, so... When I was asleep, that's when I talked to Ed. That's how I knew about the antifreeze, remember? So, maybe if I sleep on the graves like I did with Ed, maybe I'll talk to them too and they can tell me what happened. Oh, for the love... C come on, at least let me try it. Even if it were just a weird premonition or something, maybe it'll offer some insight? You dragged me out here for this? I'm trying to take this seriously, Mary. I don't have time for stupid fucking shit like this. Double check my timer's past the minute mark. <laughs> um, I am being serious. Please, at least give me a chance. Fine. You have 30 minutes, so choose one of them. I'm waking you up when it's over. Okay, I can do that. Twyla wants me to choose one person to talk to. I guess I could always talk to the other when she's gone, but I need the person I choose to be enough to convince her that I'm not just playing around. Uh, there's a boy and a girl here. I don't actually know the circumstances of the death, so I guess I'll just go with my gut instinct. Let's go... Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch the tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, to the boy. I laid atop the grave and gently shut my eyes. It felt weird to be doing it purposefully this time. But I was prepared and made sure I woke up extra early today so that I'd be able to fall asleep with no problem. It happened. Just like last time, I woke up in an unfamiliar place, but getting a closer look, this place seemed more familiar than I thought. I recognized this place. There was a road below my feet and buildings surrounding me. Looking up, I could see the sign on the post next to me. Black Oak Street. I know this street. It's a little out of the way from where I usually go, but I have been here a few times before. My shoes are wet. I looked down. There was water running past my feet. The trail of it led further down the road. It was a bit foggy that way, but I could see bright lights shining from behind the mist. I made my way over. I nearly, I nearly startled myself when I realized there was someone else. <laughs> oh my gosh, someone else here with me. Ooky spooky, oof. Oof. Big heckin' oof. I had found the source of the water. A terribly busted fire hydrant was burst. Ah! I wish I saved before I went to, to sleep so I can come back. Gosh. Gah! Get ba! Get ba 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 Gah! If I saved first. It's fine, because you could just hit load, and I could have done the girl, too. Ha! 
Oh, golly god. Okay, fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 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 It's fine. I'm not doing this in the completionist way yet. <laughs> well, I might come back for that because I actually am enjoying this. Uh, a terribly busted fire hydrant was bursting. Was bursting with it. Sitting on top was a boy I'd never met before. It looked like he was taller than me, but he also looked like a high schooler. Despite, <clears throat> despite his body dripping with blood and the steering wheel around his neck, he seemed bored more than anything else. There was a broken traffic light that fell over, and next to its source, I could see an ambulance and some police cars with their sirens. Uh, I guess it was a car accident. Uh, hello? Diesel? Ah, uh, I was wondering when you'd speak up. I wasn't sure which one of us was supposed to talk first. You're... you're bleeding quite a lot. Are you okay? Well, I am now. Truth be told, I haven't been here in a while. I was kind of wondering why I was sent back here. Uh, but then you showed up, so I guess that partially answers some of it. I mean, I don't know exactly what's happening, but you don't quite look like you belong here, so... I gotta say though, despite that, your presence... You feel kind of warm. Familiar, maybe. Do you go to my school? I, I don't think so. Um, I'm sorry. I, I hope I don't seem pushy. But I don't have a lot of time here. I is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Alright, shoot. Uh, how did this happen? Oh, like... Like, all this? I hit by another car. Another car? Yeah, like... I was in my own car, right? I was driving to school, rainy morning, as usual, right? And I hit a stoplight. Wait. And I, oh, so, uh, and I hit a stoplight, so I stepped on the brakes. Or at least, well, I thought I did. Next thing I know, I got, I've got a car crashing right into me from the side. It bangs me into the pole, and next thing I know, I'm here. Oh my. I'm so sorry. It isn't like it's your fault. And being here freaked me out really bad at first, but I don't know. I guess I'm fine now. It still sucks though, like, I was so close to graduating, you know? This is my last year this year. Assuming it's still this year over there. <laughs> uh, where all the living people are. Do you know... Mm -hmm. Do you know, have any idea, what? Do you know, have any idea why that might have happened to you? What, the crash? I told you it was because of my brakes. You said you, you, you thought you pressed them. Well, yeah, I thought so. But maybe I was out of it or something. Maybe hit the wrong pedal. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but uh, do you think someone may have done it on purpose? I am... Um, my friend and I are investigating a potential murderer. Do you think what happened to you was planned? Well, I hope not. I can't think of any reason why someone would want to do this to me. Well, maybe one. Oh? But if that really is the case, I don't want to talk about it. I see. Would it... Would it be okay if I looked at your car? Just to see. I guess. I'm sorry. It's okay. It scurried past him and the other cars are blocking my way, making my way over to the car that was clearly hit. It was definitely busted pretty bad. Other than the missing steering wheel, the inside of the car seemed fine. I looked under the car just in case. Something was dripping. It was hard to see just what it was. I was hoping to get... Time's up. I was awoken by Twyla, who roughly shook me awake. She was clearly running low on patience. Well, did you find anything? Or did you just waste my time? Uh, sorry, I'm still a little drowsy. Well, snap out of it. Tell me what you learned. Uh, um, he was in a car crash. He was on his way to school and his brakes weren't working. So when he accidentally passed a stoplight, another car crashed into him. And that's how he died. And you didn't know him prior? No, not at all. 
I remember hearing a crash on uh, Black Oak, but you said his brakes weren't working? That's what he told me. Actually, when I went to his car to check it out, I saw something dripping underneath. Really? How'd it look? I, I don't know. It was kind of dark, I guess. I would assume oil? I see. D did I help? Actually, yeah. You did. I did? I recently heard from an inside source that they discovered the brakes were cut shortly after the incident. R really? I never heard that. Of course you didn't. Because they don't want you to know. Who doesn't? I have to get going, Mary. But I have to say, I don't know how you did it, but this ability of yours seems like it'd be useful to me. I'll get back to you on this later. Ah, alright. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I wish I went for the girl instead. Well, no, not instead. I wish I saved so I had the option to do both. But I didn't, because I'm a dingling. Toyo left to go to her meeting, leaving me stranded there. I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the rest of the day, but I'm glad I was finally able to be of use somehow. I actually felt pretty good leaving the cemetery. That is, until I walked out of the gates and saw him there waiting for me. Proven? I didn't know you were coming. Mary, what the fuck was that? Huh? You weren't talking with Twi Twyla in there. You were talking with Twyla in there. I saw you. Did I tell you to keep your distance from her? Listen, I know you don't have any friends, Mars, but being all alone is better than hanging with her. Besides, aren't we friends? You'd rather hang around a bitch like her than me? Hey, wait a minute. You, you're the one who's been having an attitude with me lately. And you're always, and you always leave the house before I'm even awake, and you don't even message me all day. It isn't like you're messaging me either, princess. Ugh, whatever. Just stay away from her, okay? And away from me too while you're at it. I don't. I don't like that. Croven angrily stormed off after that. I felt so conflicted. You never used to get mad at me like that. I know Croven doesn't like her for whatever reason, but I know Twyla isn't a bad person. She may do some devious things, but I know she's doing them for good reasons. She'd have to care about people, putting her life on the line to try and stop a potential killer. She may not be the nicest personality, but she's good in heart. Right? Hmm. The rest of my day after that was uninteresting. The Croven didn't talk to me for the rest of the night when I got home. Maybe that was for the best. Besides, I could always rely on someone else to talk to me at night. I, I don't understand what's happening with this fella. I don't. Did the angel statue always have one eye open when I closed? That really stands out to me at the present moment. Also, whose skull is this? Is this someone's skull? Or is it a novelty toy thing? <laughs> I don't know. And then he stomped away. I see. I'm sorry you're faced with that. It's whatever, I guess. He's always in a bad mood lately, so I try not to take it too personally. Do not. I don't. Um, just wondering, but... If you were in my shoes... You think I should trust him on it? I can't answer that for you. They're your friends, not mine. How do you feel towards them? I want to believe Twyla's a good person. I want to believe Cor Crovin is just trying to protect me. Well, the boy I'm friends with. I know he's just been going through a lot recently. I don't know what problems he had with the girl, but I can understand why someone wouldn't like her. And I can see why he might not want me to hang out with her. I think I have to keep helping her, though. I promised I would, after all. And it's for good reasons. I'll, I'll try to be more patient with him. And maybe try to ensure... 
and try to ensure him that I trust his judgment too. I think that's very fair of you. I hope everything works between you and your friends. <laughs> Thanks, I think. Good night, Mary. So, I, I still don't really understand why we're maintaining an ongoing text with someone who kidnapped our parents and intends to kidnap us. I had a pretty decent sleep despite everything that was going on, or everything that was bugging me. Before I even got out of bed for the day, my phone started buzzing with text messages. It was Twyla. Mary, are you there? I need you for something. If I'm thinking correctly, you'd be able to help me with this very well. I'm not sure what I should do. I want to help Twyla, but Corvin was really mad yesterday to see me with her. If I don't help, she might be missing out on evidence because of me. But if I go with her and Corvin finds out we're together again, it could result in him feeling even worse. Well, he hasn't given us a freaking reason to listen to him. Right? Like, there's no evidence. There's no event. And I think... Corvin is... Suspicious. A little bit. I don't know. I don't want him to be upset with me again, but I don't want Twyla to get upset with me either. What should I do? The secret third thing that pisses everything off. Uh, let's go Twyla. I'm more curious what that is than trying to appease our Nemocene cousin. So I respond to Twyla, telling her I could make it. Good. I assume you're going to talk to m uh, me. Mm -hmm. I assume you're going to tell me to meet you by the cemetery again, so I'll see you there at 12. Don't be late. Okay. Not wanting to be late, but not wanting Corvin to possibly ask where I was going, I quietly got changed and slipped out the front door. I nervously waited for the bus, hoping I wouldn't see him until later tonight. I hop, hopped off the bus and started making... Mm -hmm, and <laughs> I hopped off the bus and started to make my way towards the cemetery. I was really hungry. I probably should have packed something back at the house, but I guess I was too scared of the possibility of running into Cor Croven there and having to explain where I was going in such a hurry. Twyla met me at our designated time and place, and I asked where we were going today. The hardware store? Hmm. The hardware store? Do you know where you checked most of them? Yes, but someone I talked to actually provided me with some important information the other day. I heard that our main suspect visits this specific one at least once every two weeks. So if that's true, it seems like today will be the day he shows up. So, are we just going to wait there until he does? We might have to. We might have to. But what if he doesn't? Are you doubting me? Well, no, but... Good. Let's go before we miss him. I headed back down the hardware... Uh, headed back down to the hardware store with her. Though, I wasn't sure what her plan was. Even if we were to catch him buying something, is that really proof he's the culprit? Hmm. We arrived at the hardware store, except for a few employees here. It was pretty much empty. Oh, <laughs> Mary. On Twyla's instruction, we were... On Twyla's instruction, we waited for Reginald to stop in. But as long as we waited there, we didn't see him. We looked around the store several times, but still nothing. Though I lost Twyla a few times, so a part of me wondered if she was just trying to keep me busy. That doesn't make sense, because if she really wanted to sneak around, then she wouldn't have invited me in the first place. So why did she invite me? I was considering asking Twyla if we should leave. I had Reginald's phone number. I considered asking Twyla if I should text him, but that would be suspicious if I did, wouldn't it? Hey, are you going to the hardware store today? Why, oh no reason. How did I, how did I know? Haha, <laughs> I didn't. 
Yeah, that would probably be way too suspicious. And I wouldn't want to ruin Twilight's plan or anything, whatever it may be. We sat near the front of the store waiting for anybody to stop in. We were quiet, as Twyla was busy texting somebody. I don't know who, but I guess it was important as she responded to them for a long time. She kind of ignored me as, a, uh -huh, as she continued to text them. The sound of her fingers against the screen was a rapid, so it had to be important somehow. So I let her text, trying to think of something we could do until he got here, if he even got here. I considered getting up and making another round, the uh, another round around the hardware store when. Ah! Ah! Gasp, Mr. Man! <laughs> the expressions, all the expressions. Out from one of the one of the aisles, Reginald walked by, pushing a cart in front of him. But how? When? We never saw him enter the store, or saw him enter, or saw him the entire time we were walking around. Could he have been here, and we just missed him? But his cart had more than a few items in it, so he had to have been here at least a while, looking for it all, right? However, it happened. We finally managed to spot him. And he spotted us as well. He gave us a smile and a wave as he walked past us to the checkout counter. He raised a finger to us to gesture as if to say, just a minute. Uh, as all his stuff got packed into plastic bags, I turned to Twyla to gauge her reaction, but I couldn't read anything past her usual poker face. She was just staring intently at him, as if analyzing him. I wish I knew what she was thinking. Then she began to walk away from me. I didn't understand why and almost followed her until I noticed Reginald walking towards me wearing a smile on his face and bags in his hands. <laughs> this is so cute and I love it. Uh, well, parts of this are cute. But just the, I, I love all the expressions happening. Hello, Mary. I didn't expect to see someone like you here. Out again with Twyla, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. We were just here, um... Buying new tools, looking for antifreeze. Building a birdhouse. Oh my gosh, Yon. What feels like the least suspicious thing or the thing that forwards us the most. I think looking for antifreeze, no way, me too. Versus birdhouse, which is kinda <laughs> Oh gosh, I I I don't and shovels and gloves those brushes to wipe off snow of your car, you know, winter stuff. Really? Well, that won't be necessary. Oh? You have my number, don't you? If there's ever any snow that's getting in your way this winter, just call me up. I'll take care of it for you. Oh, Reginald. That's a very generous offer, but I couldn't possibly accept it. Please, I insist. It'd be my pleasure. Well, I'll consider it. Thank you. So what brings you here today? Me? Oh, nothing important. Just picked up some stuff I need uh, for the apartment, that's all. Even with how much rent I pay, I still have to take care of everything myself. <laughs> ah, sorry, that sounds troublesome. Eh, why are you apologizing? Isn't your fault. Well, yeah, but still. Oh, I ought to, get, uh, I ought to be going now, I suppose. My errands aren't going to take care of themselves. But, say, next time you need to come here, reach out to me, won't you? I love to tag along, and I think I'd be able to help you a bit too. Okay. I'll remember that. Thank you. After that, Reginald left out the door, waving goodbye. <gasps> oh. Twyla walked back over to me after having been watching from the sidelines the whole time. Um, Twy? Uh, what was the point of that? 
Like, you didn't even talk to him. He just walked right out the door. Yeah, but did you see what he bought just now? I don't know, should I have? Within his purchases, I saw him buy antifreeze. Not with the kind of gallon we were looking for, but he did buy it. On top of that, he's bought rat poison, insecticide, and rope. Well, that stuff doesn't inherently mean he's using it for anything bad. Are you going to report that, though? No. You're going to pursue him. Before he gets far enough, I want you to go out there and ask to help him. I... what? Isn't he our main suspect? Don't you think he's dangerous? And you want me to go with him? For whatever bizarre reason, he seems to have a liking to you, right? So you can probably get a lot up, uh, out of him. Twyla, I don't know about this. Why not? You're the one who said he's not inherently doing bad things anyway, right? So you should have no reason to be scared. Heh. I don't like her reasoning. It just feels, it just feels not good. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Water for the old throat. Besides, I have to take care of something else anyway. But I'll have my phone on me the whole time. So hurry. Uh, go out there and catch up to him. And text me any updates. If things start going really bad, you can just call for help. I should have known. Known what? That you'd rather chicken out and let more people die. Should I even be surprised, though? Of course you'd want that to happen. To fill up your precious cemeteries you love so much. Maybe that's why you keep hindering my progress. I ran out the door as fast as I could. Even though I didn't say anything, I think Twilight could tell I was going after Reginald like she wanted me to. To my r surprise, he actually wasn't that far down the street. I was surprised to see him on the street at all, actually. I guess he was taking the bus like I do? Or maybe his car was just parked far? Whatever the reason, it worked out well for me. I was able to skip up, uh, able to skip up to him pretty quickly. Reginald, wait a moment. I, I'm sorry. Ah, mm hmm Is everything all right? Ah, well, you see, uh, back there, Twyla mentioned to me. You were, um, buying rat poison? Oh, yeah. It's a bit embarrassing to admit, but my apartment has been having a bit of a rat problem lately. My landlady won't do anything about it, so it's up to me, I suppose. She doesn't even answer the door anymore. Can you believe that? So I guess I ought to take care of it before my neighbors start uh, having rodent problems too. Well, I don't think you should kill them. They probably just didn't have anywhere to go. It's not fair to them. I'm sorry, but I really don't think there's much I can do at this point. Well, um, I'm actually pretty good with animals, especially small ones. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah, so maybe I can come over and I'll try to help you with them. So you won't have to kill them. Hmm. Oh no. I appreciate your concern, but are you sure that's something you want to do? Yes, absolutely. Well, all right. If it means that much to you, when you'd like to come over. Oh, I was thinking right now. Oh, <laughs> that's so last minute. You're not even giving me time to straighten things out. I can't possibly have you over right now. I'd just die of embarrassment. Or you might die of fright. <laughs> Please? The problem will be over sooner if you let me come now. Well, alright. You drive a hard bargain. My car is just around the corner, and the drive shouldn't be too long. Oh, good. Hopefully I can help at least a little bit. <sighs> I'm still iffy about Twyla, because that was, that was not the coolest. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Underhanded. Oh. The like Gretchen said, we got to his car around the corner. Once I was buckled inside, I messaged Twyla. I'm in his car. We're heading to his apartment. Perfect. 
Make sure to snoop around while you're there. I don't know. I said I was going to help with a rat problem. So? Even more of an excuse to be snooping around. You have to look for that rat, right? I guess so. Text me when you get there. Make sure you talk to him on the ride over. If you spend all your time texting me, he may think you're up to something. Right. Aww. Put my phone down and took a deep breath. Everything about this felt uncomfortable. Going to Reginald is just a spy... Just to spy through his things? That's not right. But if if he really is dangerous, maybe that makes it okay? But if he isn't, then... And if he is dangerous, and then I have to be extra careful, I don't know what... I don't know what he could do. I mean, I don't know him that well. And here I am, heading to his house. I'll just be on my toes. So, have you worked with the rodents before? Kinda. Oh, uh, kinda. I know a lot of people are scared by them, but they don't bother me any. Original and I spoke as he drove. I actually had a pet tarantula when I was younger. I know it's not exactly the same, but... It's an unconventional pet, I guess. Fascinating. I've never been much of an animal person myself, but who knows? Maybe that would change if I got a pet. Unfortunately, my apartment doesn't allow them. A shame, too. A cat who would most be most handy in the situation. <laughs> I suppose so. I guess I'll be your cat stand-in. <laughs> it seems so. How do you plan to catch it, if I may ask? Oh, um... I'll get a feel for your apartment first, then I'll see the best method to go about it. Sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> Eventually, we made it to Reginald's apartment building. Most of the apartment buildings within the city are kind of cramped. Reginald's was not much different. Despite this, it didn't look half bad. The outside seemed pretty clean, and there was a parking, a parking lot right next to the building. It was convenient that he did not have to park on the street. Pulling up to it, it was a lot bigger than I anticipated. Wow, this place is huge! Oh please, it only looks big from the outside. It only looks nice from the outside too. <laughs> Burn! Still, this seems like a nice enough place to live. It works, I suppose. Though, I think one day I'd like to move... Uh, I'd like to have a house. I like my privacy and alone time. Really? But you're so open and friendly. Huh. You think so? I don't quite see things that way. Hmm. We stepped inside Reginald's apartment, and already I could see what he meant when he said it looked nicer from the outside. It wasn't terribly dirty, but it definitely looked like there was some dust around. Dust about. On top of that, it was incredibly plain. Dull of anything except doors, and an elevator, and a stairwell. Not even a decorative plant. To top it off, there was a faint smell in the air that was just not good. I don't quite know how to describe it, but it was definitely unpleasant. I'm on the top floor. Our elevator is broken, however, so I hope you don't mind taking the stairs. That's fine, I don't mind one bit. As we walked up the stairwell, I texted Twilight to let her know I arrived as well as his address, just in case she needed that information later. Reginald's apartment was on the fifth floor. It was a long walk up the stairs, and once we were at the top, it felt incredibly high up. I was looking out the windows in the narrow hallway as he fumbled with his keys to unlock the apartment door. It only occurred to me after the fact that I probably should have offered to hold his bags for him, but I was distracted. He got the door open, though, and uh, welcomed me inside. He's so well quaffed. I was going to say, why do none of these assholes have jobs, but I forgot he's a coffin maker. Like, he literally has... He, he's the only person who explicitly has a job. <laughs> um... 
Well, here we are. I hope you'll forgive my messy things. Mm hmm. How messy things are now. Mm hmm. How messy things are right now. <laughs> Alright, where's my water? Hold on. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> Frustrating. <clears throat> Take a breath. Take a breath, learn to read. Take a breath, learn to read. <laughs> Messy? Virgil had nothing out except his furniture. None of it seemed overly dusty or anything. Well, he's, I, I didn't get to read what he said, but just then he got a phone call. Ah, terribly sorry, but I believe I have to take this. Uh, I'll be just a moment, but please do make yourself at home. Heh. Okay, the snooping begins, I guess. Original excused himself into what seemed to be his bedroom. I took a quick glance at my surroundings to get a feel for things, and where I should start to look for evidence, I guess. Original's apartment felt a bit smaller than what I had expected. He seemed very minimalist. I don't know how much he was allowed to change about his apartment, but even still, I don't know how much evidence I could find when it seemed like he hardly even owned anything to begin with. I took out my phone to text Twyla. I hoped she would respond quickly before Reginald came back. I'm in his apartment now, and I'm not quite sure what to do. He left to take a phone call. I know I should look for evidence, but I don't know where to look. Well, fucking look somewhere! <laughs> Try at least, instead of texting me. Even something small could be important. Okay then. I mean, she's right. Gotta look for something. Um bathroom, bedroom, hallway, kitchen cabinets. Cause at least if we're caught with that, they can explain it. Walked into the kitchen area and quietly started opening some of the cabinets. Couldn't find much in here. The only thing that could have potentially struck me as suspicious is the bottle of drain cleaner. But it was kept right under the sink. That's not weird. Hmm. I opened the drawer at the end table that was sitting behind the couch. There's nothing really here except some keys and spare change. I closed the drawer hallway. I peered into the hallway using the peephole on the door. I don't know what I was looking for exactly. Faintly, I could hear the murmuring of people on the other side. It sounded like his neighbors were talking to someone out in the hall. Hmm. So I opened the door to Reginald's bathroom. It was pretty tiny cramped even for a one bedroom apartment. Uh, I looked in some of the drawers. There's nothing really... N there was nothing that really stuck... struck me as being suspicious here. I left the bathroom. So... Bathroom, hallway, cabinets, bedroom, then text. I quietly snuck over to Reginald's bedroom door where he was talking on the phone. I felt bad listening to his conversation, but... I couldn't really hear what he was saying. It sounded frustrated. Not angry, just frustrated. I stepped away from the door. Alright, well that's all the list. It's not difficult to see anything suspicious. I was about to text Twyla and ask if she had any ideas what I could do, but before I was able to text her I was hit again with an unusual and unpleasant smell. It was stronger this time. It was definitely something in this apartment. I followed the scent to a door at the end of the hallway in the apartment. It led me to a room with an oddly placed wardrobe in it. The smell was coming from this. Twyla, there's a weird smell in this apartment. I think it's from the wardrobe in here. Is it locked? I don't know. I haven't tried to open it yet. Do I dare open it? Well, there really is something in there. What if there's a body in there? What would I do? Would I just pretend I didn't see it? Would I run out? 
Would... Would he know? Mary, are you okay? Have you opened it yet? No. Well, what are you waiting for? You don't want to get caught by him. The only option is open. <laughs> it literally gives only the option. Again, love expressions, love the art. Twilight was right. I didn't want to get caught. And knowing what was in there was important. Even if it wasn't something pretty. I reached a hand forward, but... The the wardrobe shook? The wardrobe, ju the wardrobe just shook. Really? You better open it then. Again, she was right. I don't have a lot of time. If it moved like this, something or someone had to be in there. I had to know. Or else I'm just letting another person really open the door. <laughs> Reach hand towards the handle. It was locked. And inside. Wait, what? It was locked. Oh. It was just a nest of rats. Just like Reginald said uh, he'd been having a problem with. It looked as though the mama had become... It, mm -hmm. it looked as though the mama had become a mama not too long ago. I guess that explains the smell and the shaking. I, I felt bad having doubted him now. Yeep. It seemed as if I woke up the rats. The mom looked uh, was going to attack me, but Reginald was here and he held the door shut just in time. Reginald, I'm, I'm so sorry. I can explain. I was looking- No, no, it's quite alright. You went looking for the rat by yourself, right? But it was irresponsible of me to let you do that on your own. If that rat's infected with something and bit you, then, oh, I just feel awful. Hey, hey it's okay. I'm fine, see? I, I shouldn't have been looking through your stuff like that. It was just really awful of me. I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. I, I'm the one who's sorry. Letting you come over when my apartment is such in such a state. I'm sorry, but it's probably better if you leave now. I, mm, that's understandable. I'm very sorry. Huh. Apologized to Reginald a few more times before I left for good. But he assured me each time that he was the, the sorry one. He looked really embarrassed. I felt so bad. He asked if I wanted a ride home, but I told him that it was okay, I'd just take the bus. He was also kind enough to reassure me that he would look for a rat specialist or something to pick them up rather than use the poison, because he knew how much it bothered me. He was sweet. As I hopped on the bus home, I checked my phone. Mary, are you there? Did you find anything? Uh, sorry I didn't respond earlier. I opened the wardrobe, but there were just some rats in there after all. Damn it! That doesn't help our case at all. Actually, there was something a bit unusual I spotted while, while I was there. Was it, like, the armor boots in there? What was it? He, he said he bought rope earlier, right? Yeah, why? Well, when I opened the closet, I noticed there was some some already there. Is that so? What do you think he needs it for? Twyla? Huh. I mean, having buying more rope when you already have rope. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what bitches use rope for these days. There was rope in there, wasn't there? I was on the left hand side. You didn't really have anything. <gasps> it seemed to require rope. But, like, I don't know what the hell rope is even used for these days. Like, broadly speaking. I don't know. Hey, are you there? It's late. I wasn't sure you were still going to message me tonight. I just had a busy day. Understandable. As did I. 
For some reason, I have a feeling our days were busy in different ways. That's probably true. You must be tired then, after such a busy day. I guess so. Well, I won't keep you up any longer than I have to. As long as you're safe, that's what matters. Hoping to see you soon. Good night, Mary. Good night. Thank you. I... I think I might want to end this one here because it's kind of late and in real life. I, I will pick this up when I can. Um, cause I, I've been enjoying this game. I, I'm weirdly enjoying the characters. And I really am liking how it's written. It, despite being completely illiterate as a person, I'm enjoying how human everyone sounds. I mean, there's times I'm absolutely effing it up, but how thoughts are broken up, where pauses are, I mean, where they are naturally in the text versus where I pause because I'm, Ill I'm illiterate. Um, I, I, I like how it's written. I like how humans talk. I like how they express in this. I think it's really interesting. I think this is a beautiful game and I will finish it. I think I've determined that I'm going to finish it. Just not tonight. Um, yeah. I will continue this. I hope to see you guys there. But for now, bye my friends. I hope you're having a safe spooky season.